Eternity. The Freemasons. Only very few of us know what goes on in their lodges and what their objectives are. Freemasons. Throughout history, they have been linked repeatedly with conspiracies and dark deeds. Did they set up a worldwide network with their secret signs? And are they now seeking world domination? Where have they left their symbols? And what are they keeping so secret? Mozart was one. And so was Winston Churchill. Goethe, too. And... I'm John Wayne. They wear an apron and work with special tools, but they are not craftsmen. Almost every large town contains a Masonic lodge, and they have six million members worldwide. The Freemasons pursue a noble objective. It is um, uh, an institution where men of their own uh, free will and accord uh, join of different backgrounds. They join uh, this uh, fraternity to help uh, make themselves better, uh, discover who they are, and by becoming a better person, by interacting with other people, you can become a better uh, element in society. But what are the Freemasons keeping secret then? Where do their strange-looking symbols and rituals come from? And what do they signify? The history of Freemasonry begins officially in London in 1717. But the search for the roots of the organization leads much further back into the past, to the breathtaking cathedrals of the Middle Ages. The origins of Freemasonry go back to the medieval cathedral guilds, the Mason's guilds. That's also where the word lodge comes from, because it's another word for the room where the tools were stored. The cathedral guilds were headed by elected masters. The stonemasons lived and worked in very cramped conditions. They closed themselves off to the outside world because they wanted to protect the secrets of their trade. If a journeyman came to a cathedral mason's guild, he had to identify himself with a secret sign, firstly by means of a handshake, where the area between thumb and first finger was pressed twice in quick succession. If this test was passed, the journeyman then had to appear before the master according to a precise ritual. With his feet at right angles, he took three steps forward. The master greeted him with the handshake too. If he had any doubts, he would ask for a second handshake, this time pressing on the wrist arteries. If the journeyman knew this sign too, he was allowed in. Indeed, the stonemasons' guilds were real secret societies. To prevent apprentices from collecting the wages of journeymen, for instance, the journeymen had a password. They had to tell it to the master on payday. Yeah. Only if the word was right were they paid. From the 16th century onwards, the stonemasons' guilds entered a state of crisis. There were less orders for large religious structures, and the number of guilds steadily decreased. But then, something strange happened. In the early 17th century in England, non-Masons started being admitted to the lodges, men who weren't craftsmen at all. This was the decisive point in the development of Freemasonry. This made it interesting for the unqualified, that is, people who had nothing to do with building or with the science of building, such as architecture, mathematics and so on. The first Freemasons' lodges began to appear. It was the Age of Enlightenment, and the seclusion of the lodges provided an opportunity to exchange opinions undisturbed. It was socially a wonderful time because people could get together, leave their wives at home, go to a, a location, you know, composed of men of different social classes who could interact and talk about private things to one another openly under seal of secrecy. So they could discuss ideas which were forbidden and dangerous to discuss. After the first Grand Lodge was founded in 1717, Freemasonry soon spread across Europe and North America. 
Whether poets, philosophers, merchants or doctors, the spirit of tolerance and brotherhood in the lodges appealed to many. As a result, many politicians, including US President Harry Truman, were Freemasons. And it was precisely this that led to repeated speculation. Were the Freemasons planning some secret coup? The fact is, the Freemasons' constitution forbids them to discuss politics at all in their lodges. Nevertheless, there has always been a great deal of wild speculation as to what the Freemasons really get up to in their lodges. There are rumours of strange rituals that are supposed to occur when they meet. These ritual actions have a special function, however. The ritual is very important uh, in Freemasonry. Um, we use, think of ritual almost like a piece of theater. Uh, but instead of being a spectator, you are basically taken apart in it. We are given the rare opportunity of visiting a lodge. The Washington Daylight Lodge meets once a month. The Worshipful Master, the Freemason's name for their elected president, was born in Germany. He shows us the most important chamber in the lodge, the temple. As Worshipful Master, I sit in the east. I sit beneath the symbol of the square and compasses. The Freemasons make use of the stonemason's tools in a figurative, symbolic sense. A new member is like a rough, unhewn stone. By working on himself, he becomes a smooth stone, that is, a better person. The apron is equally symbolic. Master stonemasons wear aprons to keep clean and to carry their tools in them. Today they're only used symbolically. It's an honorable item of clothing. The Freemasons' meetings always take place in the temple, so-called because it is always modeled after the legendary Temple of King Solomon. The white and black tiles symbolize good and evil in man and in society, in our world. This black and white floor is where the most important element of the temple stands, the altar. Lying on it, a Christian Bible, or holy books of other religions. And, when the lodge is open, the square and compasses, the highest symbols of Freemasonry. The principle of the divine in Freemasonry is also symbolized by the all-seeing eye, the pentagram, and the hexagram. The symbols can be interpreted in different ways. But some signs do have a set meaning. The square and compasses, the logo, as it were, of the Freemasons, stand for harmony between body and spirit. The right angle symbolizes justice, the right actions of the Freemason. The compasses are the tool of the Creator. They express the Freemason's distance from others and his relationship to them. The plumb line symbolizes truth and directness of thought. It also serves to plumb one's inner depths. Those wishing to become Freemasons have to undergo an initiation ritual, which has been exactly the same for centuries. Before the candidate is first allowed into the temple, he is led into a dark room. Inside it, a candle, an hourglass, a skull, and a Bible. The objects symbolize death and transience, the transition from darkness to light that is awaiting him. At this stage, the newcomer has to ask himself again whether he really wants to be a Freemason. Then a master of ceremonies arrives in company and fetches the candidate. Please remove any metallic items. Removing one's jewelry or money is a kind of symbolic purification, a separation from everything worldly outside the lodge. Your jacket, please. Now the candidate takes off his jacket and exposes the left part of his chest as a sign of honesty and openness. He also exposes his left arm and his left knee and exchanges his left shoe for a slipper. Then he is blindfolded. Blind, helpless and limping along, 
the new member is led to the door of the temple. All this is intended to make it clear to him that he is on the path from darkness to light. Then he has to knock three times at the temple door. The worshipful master opens. Stop. No further. Who desires admittance? A free man of good report. The future Freemason enters the temple, and then, according to a strict sequence of rituals, he is symbolically sent on a journey. At the end of it, the candidate kneels down in front of the altar. He places his right hand on the Bible and the square, and the compasses are placed on the left part of his bared chest. Now he makes his vow. The new Freemason swears to act in a humanitarian way and to keep silent about the lodge. The worshipful master dubs him three times. This was originally done with a dagger. Then the new apprentice has his blindfold removed and the brothers accept him into the Freemason fraternity. The initiation in Freemasonry is a unique thing that one discovers only when one gets into it, no matter how much they've read about it. One discovers his own secret only when initiated. Finally, the new member is taught several identification signs dating from the old Cathedral Mason guilds. The next sign, the password, and the handshake. Normal lodge work mainly consists of intensive discussions. Masonic lodges are involved in a great deal of social work. In the USA, which has the most Freemasons, they even finance hospitals and similar institutions. The secretiveness of the Freemasons has often caused them problems. Their lodges have been repeatedly